Yo, what is up guys, Dark here, and this is going to be game 2 of my uh, round 2 OST match against Lyconic. Uh, I did unfortunately lose game 1, um, it was quite a bit of a haxy match, uh, Lyconic definitely got some luck that uh, helped him a lot, <laughs> but uh, that's not to say that he did not play a very good game, and um, it was definitely not unwinnable on my part, Lyconic just played very well, and um, obviously I was not able to pull out the win because of it. And uh, that basically means that if I do lose this game then I will be out since it is best of 3, so, um, going into this, you know, positive attitude, gotta win this game, gotta, gotta get, put it to uh, game 3, so, I'm just gonna hop into the replay. So, looking at team preview, um, going into game 2, I definitely felt that I had the matchup again. Uh, mainly because uh, Hazards are just so good against his team, and his Starmie can't really spin without getting Pursuit Trapped from my T-Tar. Which, um, I am definitely gonna try to do, um, Pursuit Trapping Starmie is definitely one of the things that I'm looking to do, um, straight away. Um, T-Tar in general just puts in a lot of work, like it can trap um, Thunderous and do a good 70% to it if it does um, choose to switch out. It can get some damage on Kiram, which um, along with Hazards will be building up damage really really quickly, especially if it's um, Life Orb. But um, if it's Roost that could be a little annoying, but it can definitely be played around. And also SD Gliscor just puts in a hell of a lot of work to his team if I can get rid of these two Pokemon. Like, if I get rid of Thunderous and Kiram, Gliscor just wins against his team. Um, Sableye's looking not too useful, it can prevent rocks against the Powdon quite easily, which is nice, but uh, again, that's just mind game sort of thing. <laughs> so um, yeah, it can also spin block, but um, I'm looking to pursue trap uh, Starmie, so that is kind of relevant, but uh, I'm just going to hop into the replay straight away. So I'm going to leave with Sableye, obviously, since um, I want to Mega Evolve just to just to have the hazard control, really, and um, there's not really anything he can lead off with that can... Uh, prevent me Mega Evolving. Even if he leaves with Clefable, I can Calm Mind against that, and Moonblast does... I don't think Moonblast even 2 hit KOs at plus 1 after a Mega Evolution, which means that I can just... Uh, I can just recover and basically scare um, Clefable out and get back to full HP. If he chooses to like Calm Mind up against me, then I'll probably just go out to Gliscor or something, but he does lead up with Starmie, um, which is fine. I'm just going to fire off a Dark Pulse here, since if I get this in Pursuit range, um, that is amazing, since then I get a guaranteed kill on Starmie, and it's not really too big of a deal if he burns me, it would definitely be annoying since it limits the amount of times I can switch into a Powdon, but I'm just looking to get off damage on the Starmie to put it in range of T-Tar's Pursuit, so uh, I'm definitely just going to click Dark Pulse here, and uh, I'm just going to spam Dark Pulse just to stop him recovering back the health, because like I said, I really need um, Starmie in range of uh, Tyranitar's Pursuit, because I'm looking to definitely get rid of that um, as soon as possible, but uh, I'm going to pull the switch into Heatran here because I really wanted to get up my rocks as early as possible. We know it's a good play in going up to Starmie. Um, it's honestly absolutely fine though since um, since I see leftovers on the Starmie I know it's not offensive um, from before. So I'm pretty free to just go for my rocks here. Um, the best he could do would be like, I don't know, 37% with um, a Scald to me. So I do feel pretty safe getting up my rocks. Um, unfortunately though he does get a crit with a Scald ending up doing 52, which really sucks. Because it really, um, that really shortens my heat trans longevity, and basically it just went, it's, it's just gone down to half for like nothing. So um, I do get up my rocks though, but the reason I went out to my rocks is just pretty much to bait him to go into th for the, um, the spin, or not the spin necessarily, because if I stay in and just keep lava pluming or get a burn and then just keep spamming rocks, then I will get my rocks since I outslow him and he won't be able to spin them away. So his play here is most likely just Scald, and um, I'm definitely going to go into Titar here um, to attempt to Pursuit Trap this. If he burns me, that would really, really suck, because <laughs> that basically means that um, Tyranitar's crippled, and it cannot look, it can no, it can basically no longer two hit KO Starmie with Pursuit, which is what I need at the moment. So I'm um, definitely just going to go into Titar. He does go for Scald, and fortunately, Lyconic does not burn me <laughs> for once. <laughs> Stop, but uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go straight for the pursuit. Um, he does predict that and stay in and goes for the recover. I was considering crunch, but pursuit just felt like the better play. Um, that was a really, really low roll, um, 48.9%. Um, probably near minimum actually. <laughs> and uh, I just went for pursuit since I was pretty sure that it two hit KO the um, Sami spread that he was using, and it does actually because um, you'll see the um, the next pursuit does I think around 53. Yeah, it does. No, it does 54. So you realise that you can't um, just spam recover at this point, since he will go down if he keeps um, spamming that. So he does just go for the spin, and I get rid of Starmie, which is absolutely amazing for me, since that means that I'll be able to keep up rocks if I do get them up, and uh, yeah, just any hazards 
because I'm I am running like sp spike stacking on this team with Ferrothorn and uh, Heatran uh, with rocks. So and hazards are really good against him. Rocks um, do 25% to both of these every single time they come in, and these are the two things I need to get rid of. So uh, rocks would be very 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 nice. But um, he brings out his Kyurem against my uh, Tyranitar, and his best play is just going for Ice Beam. Um, I realize this and go into Slowbro. And I went into Slowbro because it's just it's just the optimal play. I can take the Ice Beam and then I can pivot into Ferrothorn on the Fusion Bolt and then get up a layer of spikes or... Well, yeah, most likely a layer of spikes. I don't think there's anything else I'd go for. <laughs> Maybe a Gyro Ball. I think Gyro Ball actually would be the better play. But, um, yeah, so I'm just going to pull the double into my Ferrothorn. But he actually goes out into his uh, Clefable. I'm guessing, realising that... Uh, because I think Fusion Bolt's a roll from there. Uh, it does, like, 52% to 62% or something. Um, with uh, max special attack Rash against Slowbro. So I'm guessing he just didn't want to get T waved or anything like that, and I'm guessing that's why he went out to Fable. Like, I guess he just didn't want to get T waved or burned or anything, which is a good play, that's perfectly understandable. And uh, I'm not going to stay in here. Um, I know that Fable can beat me, and I don't want him calm minding up on me. Because if he sets up two calm minds, then my Glide Score can't beat it. And, um, well, yeah, so, but there's also the potential that he could have Flamethrower, which he actually ends up having. Hazing? <laughs> he ends up, ends up having. Um, burn here on my Gliscor with Flamethrower would have really sucked. Um, I was completely expecting it when um, I was play playing at the time. Like, I just, I don't know, I somehow knew that Lyconic would burn me, burn my Gliscor with Flamethrower of all things, but uh, luckily for me he d doesn't and I get my Toxic Orb off, which is great. Um, I'm just going to go for a Sword Stance here. I figured that he'd try to Calm Mind. Um, I, did, I was really tempted to go for Facade expecting Thunderous, but I didn't really think Lyconic would make that play. But uh, he does, which is going to scare me out, but it's absolutely fine, but because I'm at plus two, it's going to... It's pretty much forces him to go for HP Ice. I mean, I'm not staying in because it would be a kind of dumb play despite being able to live it. I wouldn't really want my gu to risk my Glide score. So I definitely think he's going to go for HP Ice here, and I get that right, which is obviously nice. I didn't want to lose my teeth <laughs> Um I double out to my Slowbro here, uh, predicting his hip to come in. Just to get up a free Scald or a free T-Wave on something. Um, I decided to go for um, Scald first, just in case he wanted to bring up Thunderous um, on a predicted T-Wave or something. But uh, I'll go for the T-Wave here because Paralyzing Clefable would be really nice for my Ferrothorn, which means it just means it'll be able to outspeed it and, say, later on be able to power with it. And obviously Gyro Ball isn't a 2 at kill on Clefable, so... I mean, just having this slower and semi-crippled, I guess, would just be really nice for my team since this is kind of his win condition at the moment, is Clefable. Um, it's what he's playing it like at the moment, but uh, he goes out to his Thunderous, which is obviously a good play since he dodges the T-Wave, and puts me in a bit of a bad position at the moment, because I don't really have a switch into this Thunderous. Uh, T-Tar's at the point where it, I don't really want to switch it in on a Thunderbolt, and he might Focus Blast if he has it. Because there's also the uncertainty of his set at the moment, because at this moment in time, I was thinking that uh, my Ferrothorn did uh, wall it. Because, because he's Leftovers, I was thinking he'd either be... Well, I, was, I, was, I thought that he was Nasty Plot, so I was thinking like Nasty Plot, Thunder Wave, uh, Thunderbolt, HP Ice. That's what I was assuming from this point, but uh, I am going to switch out my Slowbro here into my Ferrothorn thinking that I wall it, just to get blocked by Focus Blast, so. This was a bit of um, a bit of an awkward moment, since I didn't really know what to do. Um, I don't have a switch in for this Thunderous at all, uh, Sableye doesn't switch in. Obviously Gliscor dies to HP Ice, Heatran dies to Focus Blast. And at the moment, at this at this time, I would honestly thought that I just lost this game. Because I really didn't see a way to beat the Thunderous apart from maybe like Pursuit Trapping it after sacking something. And that's pretty much what I had to focus towards. I had to... Well, I just had to Pursuit Trap it, basically. So um, I'm going to go out to Sableye here. He's obviously going to focus fast again. And I was honestly expecting him to go out to Clefable here, because... Well, because he's Focus Blast, I know that he's not Nasty Plot and he can't beat me. Uh, just with by going for Thunderbolt, since he's leftovers, he won't be able to do enough. So I really thought he'd go out to Clefable here, which is um, why I actually decided to double out to my Heatran, because I really wanted to get rocks up. But he just goes for Thunderbolt, which is, I don't know, I found kind of strange um, to do that against Sable. I guess he lost nothing from it, but I just felt that his better play was to go out to Clefable. But I guess this was a good play on his part, just in case I did double out to Heatran, but so... I mean, that's fine, and he gets the Paralyze on me, which is kind of funny. Um, it doesn't matter at all, but it's just, it's just kind of funny, and, um... He, of course, he hits, um, he hits his Focus Blast. <laughs> uh, he hits all his Focus Blast, but, uh... I was gonna go t here, and double out to Ferrothorn, because I really wanted to start getting some spikes up, just to limit the amount of switch-ins that Kieran Black had, and just in general to wear it down. Um, 
the Devil's obviously pretty good cap on. Um, but yeah, I just really need to get up some spikes, and Hazard is going to be the way that I win this game at all if I'm going to. So I'm just going to go have a layer of spikes here. He gets up his rocks. Um, I find it kind of strange how he just set up his rocks considering I had Sableye in the back and my Heatran was dead, uh, since I could have just gone out to Sableye there quite freely. And um, he basically got up rocks for the game, which would have really, really, really hurt him. So I don't know, that was kind of risky on his part, but I guess it worked out for him. But um, I'm just free to pretty much get an up another layer of spikes here. No, re no real reason not to. Um, as he brings in Venusaur, um, kind of scared by the HP fire, so um, I'm going to switch out into my Guy Score, since um, I'm pretty sure that my Guy Score can beat this, since it is, from the looking, well, looking of it, defensive. And uh, HP fire only does like 15.3%. Um, Giga Drain is doing 26 as well, which is really good to know, since my Guy Score can actually uh, beat this 1v1. And um, I was just going for Facade there, because I was honestly expecting him to switch out of Thunderous. It's basically just a mind game of when he's going to switch out to Thunderous, and I really need to get it right to get off some dam damage on it. But um, he does stay in, and honestly I'm kind of forced to SD here, since if I keep on facading against a Giga Draining Venusaur, he's going to eventually beat me. But um, he does realise this and go out to Thunderous, so he is playing this quite well. Um, predicting me to go for the Sword Stance there, and I'm obviously going to be scared out by the HPI, so there's no way that I'm staying in, I'm going to go into my Tyranitar. As I take that pretty well, and here is where I Pursuit Trap him, and this is where I start to disagree with how Lyconic is playing, like, it's glaringly obvious that I'm going to Pursuit Trap him here, because I need to if I want to win, and I just feel that he's playing overly safe when he didn't need to, or well, not when he didn't need to, when it can basically cost him. I really, really feel that he should have been playing more aggressively, since he does switch out here against my Tyranitar and he catches a Pursuit which does a good, clean 62% to him, which is really, really good for me. His Thunderous being is, um, like, what is it, 38 now? I think it was 38%, but uh, his Thunderous being that low means that it's in range of uh, Gliscor's Facade, it's in range of Titar's, I think, regular Pursuit even, which is just really, really good. So, uh, having that weakened is really going to help my Gliscor come through, but I'm uh, just going to go Gliscor against the Powdon here. And he pulls out a double to Fable, which I found kind of strange. Um, I was half expecting him to if he was going to double to uh, double out of Thunderous, I did feel that his was um, his better play. But uh, I'm not going to complain about having my Goliath score out against his Gofable, since it pretty much gives me free damage on uh, anything if I do predict right. Um, say, exam for example, if he goes out to Thunderous on a facade, then he loses his Thunderous, and that's one counter down to uh, his Goliath score here. And uh, Goliath score is definitely my win condition. It's looking, it's looking like I can win with Goliath score from here uh, with the hazards that I have. But I'm just going to go for a facade here. I was honestly expecting him to go out to Thunderous here, expecting the SD. It's just a load of 50-50s right now of whether it'll Moonblast, or go out to Thunderous, for example. Or... Who knows, like... <laughs> but I'm just going to roost here. I don't want my Glyscore getting too low. And um, he's going to go for a soft forward as well, which is perfectly fine. And uh, I'm going to go for a facade here again, um, expecting his Thunderous. And this time I actually get it right, which is amazing like this is huge like this is one counter down to my glide score and i'm really really glad that i got rid of this and now the only thing left that can actually KO my glide score and his team is his uh Kyurem. and uh as long as i play around it properly um i do definitely still have a chance of winning this game so i have pulled it back i have pulled this match back somehow <laughs> but uh I'm just going to go out to my Slowbro here on the Ice Beam again, I'm going to make the same play as last time, uh, just um, Slowbro to take the Ice Beam and then switch out to Ferrothorn. Actually no, I've found a way for it, because um, um, Fusion Bolt's a roll, and basically if I paralysed Kyrim, I just won. <laughs> like literally, if I T-Wave Kyrim, then Gliscor outspeeds, and if I got to plus 2 then I could just EQ if it got to 50 on spikes, because I'm pretty sure that's around where it would be if it came in again, um, on two layers. But yeah, I just won if I just got the T-Wave on there, though, so I was more than willing to risk a roll. So I'm just going to go for the T-Wave here, but he brings in Clefable, which is also amazing because obviously now my Ferrothorn outspeeds is Clefable and it can power with it uh, later on in the game if he gets quite low and uh, like has nothing to bring into it, because he has no switches to Ferrothorn at the moment barring Clefable since I have power with it. And if his Clefable's low, then I will be able to it KO it, which will be very, very, very nice because that means Ferrothorn will just win from there. So um, that's really good for me. Um, obviously, again, going to switch straight up to Gliscor because if this thing gets up two calm mines, then Gliscor can't beat it, and I'll pretty much just lose from there because he does have flamethrower. So yeah, uh, Ferrothorn can't beat it, and Ferrothorn won't be able to beat it anyway without like a load of paralysis. And I'm not going to be banking on hacks this game. I, de I have a win condition that's quite clear. But uh, luckily for me, he gets paralysed there. I'm not sure what he would have done. More than likely, calm minded or moonblasted. I'm thinking moonblasted, but 
Um, it doesn't really matter in the long run, uh, that paralysis, but he's he goes after Venusaur here. I was kind of scared that he'd go out to cure him, but then again, I really didn't think he would on a potential Earthquake. So um, I am just going to go for the Earthquake anyway, though, just in case he did go out to uh, cure him. And uh, I'm going to SD on here. Uh, I'm going to SD here <laughs> on his Synthesis. Um, it's basically because I knew it's Synthesis and Earthquake didn't KO, so if I SD up, then I can make sure that like, I can to it KO him from the health feed he's at. And I SD again here. Um, I guess sort of a misplay, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um, if I Earthquake, I could have 2 it KO'd him, but um, I didn't really calc it, and I thought a plus 3 would kill after the recovery from Giga Drain. But it actually ends up being a roll, and I get a really, really, really low roll of like 60 with Earthquake. So um, I actually end up having a bit less HP, but it, it doesn't really matter too much in the long run. I'm still not in range of um, Cathable's Moonblast after this toxic recovery, so... I mean, it's whatever. It doesn't really matter too much, but uh, again, just brings in Kira. And uh, if he has Roost, he's going to reveal it here. So I'm going to go straight to Ferrothorn, because if he does um, kill me with Ice Beam, uh, he'll need two shots of um, Life Orb to kill me. And if he gets down to 27, then I can just go into Tyranitar in Pursuit. Because I'm pretty sure it kills from there. And then I would basically just win with Ferrothorn. No, not Ferrothorn, um, Gliscor. So that's why I did go out to Ferrothorn here, as he does reveal the Roost, and I can just Gyro for free here. Um, he does go out to uh, Clefable here though, and uh, I get a crit gyro which does the pathetic amount. <laughs> like, I love it how the only crits I get don't ma matter in the slightest, but... Obviously again, I'm just going to go straight up to Gliscor. Um, the same player as always before, if he gets up two Calm Minds I just lose. And I'm guessing he's banking on me choking here, because um, seemingly that's kind of like the only play way he can win at the moment. But um, he Calm Minds again here, which is kind of scary, since if he crits me, <laughs> he could potentially um, KO me. But uh, I do. I did have to SD there just to basically beat him 1v1 and 2 at KO him with Earthquake, which I am going to go for here. <coughs> Excuse me. And that does a clean 59, which is really nice. And uh, he does 57 with the Moonblast, so no crit, which is uh, nice to see. <laughs> it's really nice to see, I'm not going to lie. But um, I'm <coughs> just going to Earthquake again. I, might, I think I roost. I think, yeah, I roosted here, since um, I was both anticipating the switch out and... I, I can basically roost all against his Cafable until he gets like paralyzed a load of times. Plus, Cafable's his win condition, so I was anticipating him to keep it around um, healthy. Just because if he kills my guy score, then uh, Cafable just beats my team. So uh, Cafable's his win condition at the moment, so he does kind of need to keep that around if he wants any chance of winning. Which is also another reason why I did go for the roost, since um, it means I have a more reliable way to beat his Cafable and switch into it. So I'm just going to sack Sableye here. I really don't need it anymore at all. It's just dead weight at the moment, and obviously it's a couple life orb hits on Kirim are nice. Also really nice it's not sub, sub would have been really annoying. <laughs> but I'm just going to go up to uh, Ferrothorn here. Um, this is actually really good though, because I can just gyro for free here. Um, if he brings in Hephaldon, um I haven't shown power whip here. Oh no, I actually um, spike, sorry. I didn't gyro because I wanted a third spike just to get a bit more damage on Kirim. But um, he goes up to Hephaldon, which is actually amazing for me. Because I can actually reveal Power Whip here, and he doubles out to Clefable, I'm guessing. Predicting Elite Seed, since he wanted to maybe get his health back and two Gyro Balls could have maybe killed. I'm not really too sure um, if that's what he was predicting. Maybe he was predicting Slowbro. That seems more likely. I think he might have just been predicting Slowbro, and he wanted to get his Clefable back to full. But uh, I'm actually going to reveal the Power Whip here, which really caught him off guard. And basically, if I hit the second Power Whip, then I pretty much won from... Uh, well, I, yeah, I won from here with Ferrothorn. But, um, of course, to follow the trend, I, uh, I miss my Power Whip, and uh, he hits through the Paralysis and gets off a Soft Boiled, so uh, just following the trend of the couple games that have been going on so far, which really, really sucks, but uh, that's not the end of the game. I mean, I can I definitely still have a very good chance of winning. I just got to Glide Score here, same as um, every other time where I have done, just to prevent this Cofable from uh, beating my entire team, and forced to SD here as he goes for Moonblast. There's a clean 46, and... Uh, a bit scared of a crit here, but I kind of have to EQ. I can't roost all this. Well, I can roost all this, but I just go for the EQ anyway because I know I can do it KO. And he Moonblast already gets a crit. <laughs> like, this scared me so much. Like, like Lonic, stop. Please. Please. I've had enough. Like, if that crit killed me, I would have been absolutely devastated. This match has been disgusting. <laughs> but uh, fortunately, I do live, and I'm going to Earthquake again here. I really, really don't want to risk another crit. Like, that is the last thing that I want. Another crit would just ruin, like, everything. That would be so bad. <laughs> but he just goes out to have hip out on here, which is fine. And I can roost up against this, which is great. I mean, he can predict me and go for EQ, but I can get my health back more and more. Just so I can deal with Cafable better. 
and I don't really care if he slack offs up because I can just SD against him and basically he won't be getting anywhere if he decides to do that but uh, obviously he gets off some damage there but I'm still at like 84 after this which is really really good and uh, I can get rid of hip out on and he gets used into um, Kirim here and again like I said before I'm pretty free to go into um, Veravon here I'm pretty think pretty sure um, I think I either go to Veravon or Slowbro uh, one of the two but I go to Veravon here like I said before if he roosts, then I get off a free gyro. Um, but if he, say, like, if he ice beams, uh, he puts himself in range of T Tiles Pursuit. And his Cafable can't come in on Ferrothorn at the moment, where it is so low. So basically, I've won here. I've won here unless he freezes me. And um, I just click gyro here, and as you see, he doesn't freeze me. So uh, that is going to be game two. Um, I did manage to pull out a win despite all that hacks. <laughs> But um, not to say, again, like, Lyconic like played a very good game. Um, I definitely feel, like, feel that he should have played a bit more aggressively at the end, and I felt that that was his downfall. Say, for example, if he just Thunderbolted my Tyranitar <laughs> when um, I was about to pursue him, he probably would have won. Like, I don't know, I just I felt like he was playing a bit too safely at the end, but uh, that's going to be game two. Um, I'll be uploading game three later on. I haven't actually played it yet. I'm playing it um, tomorrow, actually, um, Sunday. So uh, you guys can look forward to that, uh, wish me luck, <laughs> and uh, I will see you in the next one guys, peace.